Hello, everybody, and welcome back to The Beats. Today, we have Mike Broadwell from Solera Gem. And what we are really working for with The Beats is trying to give you like three to four weeks of a subject that we're diving deep into. So Mike is actually the end of our frequency and light three-week section. Um, and I'm going to announce our next one on the next podcast, but I just want you to be aware. So we started off actually with Catherine from Energy Bits talking about light and frequency and about Corella and Spirulina and how they capture the light of the sun and where she grows it specifically to capture the frequency that's then driven into information as information into the cellular structure of the Spirulina and Corella. And then the next week we had TK with the body mind matrix cream. And he talked a lot about frequency and vibration and how he's infused that and that information from infoceuticals with Ness health, um, into his lotion. And now we have Mike Broadwell, um, who's going to talk more about Solera gems and taking gemstones and light therapy and combining them. And Mike comes to you as an electrical engineer. So he's really coming from one side to the other and really explaining that bridge. And I know you're going to really enjoy this episode today. So take out a piece of paper. There's definitely some quantum physics. We're going to review. It doesn't get too deep. He tries to keep it simple, but I know you're going to enjoy listening to all about light energy and how frequency is the only thing that heals and incites that autonomic nervous system. So enjoy this episode of the beats. Welcome back to the Beats from the True Wellness Center with your host, Kelly Kennedy. And today we have our special guest, Mike. Mike Broadwell, thank you so much. Mike is from Solera Gem. Uh, we're going to talk a lot about light. You heard a little bit about him in the beginning. So let's just dive in. Welcome, Mike. Thank you so much for joining the Beats today. My pleasure. Thanks so much for having me. So we had met at the Bioregulatory Medicine Institute some time ago, although I had watched you be interviewed by my good friend, Dr. Christine Schaffner prior to that. So I knew of Mike Broadwell and all the wonderfulness that he brings with him. Um, and I had had exposure to the Solera Gems, but I didn't really know anything about it. And as I mentioned to you before we got started that I went back and looked at my list of podcasts because I was like, for sure, we've, we've had a whole podcast about light, right? And folks, I apologize. I don't know how we've gotten to 90 some episodes and we've not talked about light because frequency light is so powerful as part of a tool system. So let's dive in. Mike, how did you get here? What did you, what's your background? I know you've been doing this for well over 10 years now, but how did, were you always just, you grew up going, oh, I'm going to put light through gems and that's what I'm going to do when I grow up. <laughs> No, not at all. I, I was an engineer. I went to Georgia Tech many, many moons ago in engineering. And uh, way back before any of the stuff we have now, before cell phones, before, uh, you know, most people would be a dinosaur probably, but uh, spent several years in engineering. I moved uh, after a few years doing, you know, regular engineering design and stuff. I moved into more technical sales, which is broad, you know, an inch deep and a mile wide, helping people to figure out what their solutions they need and being able to talk to the very nerdy engineers and to the scaling my level, you know, to the managers, to the purchasing people, whatever. So I, I learned one, to, to have a, a broad palette of things and two, to have to communicate on many levels. And then about, you know, 15 years ago, 14 years ago, I started learning about probably holistic health about 20 years ago, I stumbled into Mercola and I learned about things like EFT and just kind of dabbled in it and then moved into uh, kind of learning about online marketing. And I moved to Tennessee and met a, a neighbor who became a good friend and actually got her to start working with me some because she loved doing computer stuff. And I told her one day that, you know, you talk all the time, we need to figure out how to monetize that. <laughs> And she didn't take offense because she knew she talked all the time, but she was very good and she knew all about holistic health. And we decided to do an, uh, a summit. She said, what topic? I said, well, let's do energy healing. Well, I told her about energy work. She thought I was crazy. And then she went and experienced it and she was blown away. So we did a program called Living Energy Secrets, which was at the beginning of the boom in the summit industry back before there were eight gazillion of them. And we did really well. We were competing and we were no names. I mean, nobody knew us from Adam, but uh, she did a great job. And uh, we 
we had fun. We talked about energy healing from a practical standpoint and then had some problems down the road with a, a business partner that ripped us off a bunch of money and all yeah, yeah, yeah. But uh, kind of happens, but that's what kind of got me into doing this stuff. And then I stumbled into a company out of the UK that made this crystal light therapy. I was at a really cool um, event in North Carolina in 2011 on bioenergy. And it had just amazing people from all over the world that were experts in all kind of energy work and energy devices. And so I tried this one and I thought, wow, this is amazing. And so I ended up buying one and the head guy of the company was very kind of frustrated because they weren't making a lot of progress in selling it. So I said, well, I got this list of people interested in energy and I'll, I'll help you market it. And it was like the hardest thing I had ever tried to market and get an appointment. Uh, I mean, it's one of their people came over a few months later and it took me forever just to get a few appointments. And it was just, so slowly a learning curve, but I, over 10 years, I ended up working with people all over the country. Um, so it was just, uh, you know, more and more, a lot of experience. And I kind of came out, came into this not knowing a lot. So I think that was good because I wasn't mistaught like so many people in the health care field. And I just kind of learned from what I observed. And it was all about terrain. It was, it was basically, uh, even though I didn't know what terrain theory was or anything, but our whole approach was working on the biological terrain. And uh, so it prepared me. And then a couple of years ago, there was more and more issues with that company and uh, some other problems. So I ended up just um, leaving them and, and created my own version. And I think I solved a lot of the problems uh, that were out there as far as the costs and having to ship stuff to England and other things. So that's kind of where I, how I got to Solar Gym. And so as an engineer, and I made a joke in the beginning, like, oh, I'm sure you set out like, oh, I want to put crystals and lights together and heal, help people heal. Obviously that was not your intention when you started to become an engineer. So I'm sure it was a big leap for you. I would imagine like you kind of skipped through like, oh, I was an engineer. And then I just started to get into energy medicine. Like, how did you just start to get into energy medicine? Cause we're not talking like right now we're recording this in 2022. You're talking probably in the early 2000s or perhaps even earlier. Yeah, it was about, we started doing the summit in 2009, the living energy okay. secrets. And I had run across, so like I said, I'd run across Mercola and, uh, he was promoting EFT and I had ordered Gary Craig's original set of about 50 DVDs for a hundred bucks or whatever. He used to almost just give them away and, you know, went through that. And then uh, what really got me going is I went to uh, an event that Dr. Alex Lloyd put on in Nashville about maybe 2008, something like that, where they really got into energy healing, his method. And it was really profound. And I remember coming back, telling my friend about it and she she just looked at me like I had three heads, but that got me really excited about it because the way they explained it, it, it really brought together a lot of the concepts. And uh, so, yeah, and, and um, just interviewing people, I, I didn't do the interviews, but I produced the interviews. And so I would listen to all these interviews multiple times, editing them. And it was very powerful because you know how frustrating things are when you're doing this online stuff. And back then, things didn't work near as well as they, they don't work now. And, uh, <laughs> but I would sit there, you know, like, and I would be like, I want to be frustrated, but I'm listening to these messages and, and I've got to keep my, you know, so it kept reinforcing to not get frustrated. And so it really, you know, helped to drive those messages home and the just meeting just some, the incredible people in that field because we interviewed pretty much just about everybody that's anybody. We never got Bruce Lipton on, but I have met him since, but we, we wanted him, but we got Donna Eden and like I say, a lot of the, the big names in energy healing. So we got to really know that, that group of people and they were just wonderful. And uh, so, yeah, I, I, I did kind of stumble into it, but I just loved it. And, and I kind of got to the point after a few years of kind of doing both, I was still doing the, the sales work and then kind of getting this started. And then I got laid off in 2010, just due to a company being bought out and, you know, getting rid of all the people that were actually knew what they were doing as they typically do. And I was ready for it. It was just that time. And I thought, I'm not, I don't want to do this anymore. I'm tired of it. So I kind of have been bumping along doing this energy stuff and 
you know, moving into that. So. so, so when we talk about energy medicine, like, can you quantify that or qualify that a little bit? Like, are we talking about Reiki, um, bioresonance, um, light therapy? Can you kind of explore that a little bit for the community? Yeah, well, what we did with our summits is we we mostly focused on techniques like EFT. Uh, I don't think that's we've ever done emotional freedom technique. Emotional freedom we, technique. We do overriding negative emotion technique. It's a similar yeah. body somatic centered therapy that is biofeedback essentially. So okay, but reading the energy of the body. Okay, what else? Oh, we did quantum touch. We did uh, Dr. Lloyd and uh, the healing codes. We did uh, Brad Nelson's. Uh, what's his? Um, can't think of the name of his stuff, but it's basically doing muscle testing and CB or T T C. Yeah. Uh, emotion yeah. code, the emotion code, emotion code. Yeah. Right. Um, so these, these are all somatic, energetic, right. Vibrational therapies that are based upon a feedback mechanism of some sort, typically a muscle response test mm -hmm. that are giving you information from the autonomic nervous system, cutting out the conscious brain and allowing us to access that deeper knowledge base, the knowing of the body and the innate intelligence. Yeah. And so we focused th that event mostly on people that had these little simple techniques that people could learn to do on their own. And we sold their programs so people could, you know, experience them. And it was just uh, beautiful because it was just like, really just everybody was so excited because it was fresh and it was, it was fun. And it was, we would have, even our speakers, would say, well, I bought four or five different techniques because I mean, I learned so many things, you know, so they're buying the stuff and learning and it was just a really dynamic time. And then it got saturated uh, pretty dramatically. I did a few live events, which are, which are really cool. We did like intensive, like two or three day workshops and had people come. And um, so really I've tried to bring energy work out to the mainstream, not make it so woo woo or so out there because it's how we work. It, it really is. You know, it's just something we've lost as human beings, but it's normal. You know? So as an electrical engineer, from your perspective, can you explain the energy of the body and how it, like, I agree with you hundred percent, you know, it is how it works. And that's why I thought it was funny that I hadn't really devoted an entire podcast to like energy medicine or light energy or whatever, you know, that whole world. So we're not computers, obviously, but can you from your perspective and your wording, explain what that means to you really, that it's how we work? Yeah, we're, we're electromagnetic beings. We have an electromagnetic field around us. And the way you can, that we've all experienced is the blind spot, right? You're driving and you're about to change lanes and something tells you, oops, don't do that. And then all of a sudden you see a car was in your blind spot. I think almost everybody, I remember when I was a teenager, because I would look back, I remember I lived in this town and there was a building, you know, right up to the street, then two or three stories high. And I was a kid, you know, you know, 16, 17 year old, usually you're like jam the accelerator, you know, like you're in a drag race, you know, when the light turns green. So the light turned green and something just told me, hold up. And for some reason I did. And then as soon as I held up, I heard a, a semi kick into gear and he blew through that light, which if I had uh, been a normal teenager <laughs> and rushed through there, like I, you know, a kid would normally do at that age, I would have been a pancake. So I look back on that and say, wow, that energetically, I sense that because our energy field does go way out. And we all know it, like uh, we talk about the vibe, you know, when the hippies talk about they like the vibe of this place, or you go into a place and it just feels beautiful or loving or scary, or it's, it's, it's a natural sense that we pick up. And that's from the energy of the room. That's from the energy of a relationship. We meet somebody and we just click. I, I remember going on a date years ago on a match.com and a lovely young lady and we met for breakfast and I could barely eat the food. It's just like, there was something about the energy and I, I couldn't, it wasn't her. She wasn't obnoxious or unattractive or anything, but it was just like, I could barely eat the breakfast and get it over with. And it was, it was weird. I was like, what is going on? You know, but now I look back and see, that's just our energies just weren't aligned. So it really is something natural and it is measurable with electronic instruments. We use things like MRI machines and medicine that they're looking at the energy field, x-rays, it's all energy. 
And light is the fundamental particle or the fundamental element of energy. And there's, is it really a particle or what? It's, it's, you know, we don't even, we get into that philosophy, but light is what the world is made of. I mean, let there be light, the first thing God said, right, at the beginning of the, of the world. And uh, so light is fundamental. It, it really, um, in the work of Dr. Dr. Pop over in Germany, that, that, that our bodies absorb light and emit light. And he almost got kicked out of, you know, his profession for trying to prove that. But he did. He proved it. And, um, you know, Lynn McTaggart's got a great work called The Field, which is like uh, everybody should read if they're interested. And that's just like such a, because she does such a great job of explaining it in simple terms. And she goes through the research and explains in very well-written way what this is, what, what these things and, are. And the intention experiment too. I think both yeah. are, that's a great book as well. And do, I would recommend reading them, not listening to them because it's a little bit heavy science and it's better yeah. to read it than listen to it. I'm listening. I've actually just re-listened to her book mm. because I've already read it. I can keep up with it, but I was listening to it the other day going, man, if I hadn't read this before, this would be a lot for me to take in. <laughs> it's just, it's a lot of content. It's a lot of science and it's all proving exactly what you said, that we all have this bioenergetic field around us and that everything is light. And whether you're looking at x-rays or MRIs, you know, science medicine has used light for years. So why do you think it's taken so long for us to go and do you know, like I'm sure you've seen about the med beds that are supposedly coming down the pike someday soon. Um, but, you know, why is it taking so long for us to get back to use light? I mean, I think of going in now into dental offices that I know of where they're using red light for healing. We use infrared saunas and, you know, light beds and all that. Like, when did that really first come on the scene, if you know, and maybe you don't, I don't know. I don't mean to put you on the spot. I'm just curious. Well, there was... Uh... In my understanding is there was a guy named uh, Dinesh Dinshaw who lived back early 1900s and uh, he developed a, a color therapy um, that's still available. You can find uh, and uh, a friend of mine came into possession of one of his early devices, which was just a big wooden box with a fan and had a big light bulb in there and he had these glass plates that were different colors and he would layer the plates to create different color and uh, in my solar gem, we use his color therapy along with what we're doing. So that became pretty popular. There's a, there's a book, uh, the World Research Foundation is a nonprofit, which if, if you've not heard of, is well, well worth knowing about, wrf.org. And uh, Stephen Ross, the guy that runs that, I happened to go visit it when they had an online, they had a, in you know, a storefront kind of presence in Sedona for several years, and they've since closed that, but he's got this huge library of books from all over the world, and uh, he is an expert in color therapy, and they're kind of really promoting the Dinshaw. In fact, that site, you can get the Dinshaw book for 12 bucks or something, and uh, so he's an expert in color th therapy, and he's got a little book, and one of the stories in there was the head, there was a in, in where you live in Philadelphia, in fact, like in the 20s, the head of surgery was a, was a woman, which was very rare in those days. She was that well respected that she was like head of surgery in this hospital. And they brought a girl in that was so badly burned that they just didn't know what to do with her. They said, we don't have a way to help her. And so this lady doctor said, well, I have one of these Denshaw color therapy machines. Mm. And since there's nothing, you know, else, let's use it on her. And they they put it on her and she started within a, a short amount of time started urinating, which I guess is the first thing to start to clear it. And so actually after maybe taken a couple of months, but she walked out of there healed from this burn. Wow. But I think what killed that is the pharmaceutical industry because that became the big thing as pharmaceuticals. And we know about the history of how that was promoted. And this lady refused to, I think she ended up losing her job because she said, I'm not going to quit using this color therapy. And I think, I think she got fired. I can't remember the, the story, but that, that whole pharmaceutical introduction killed the, uh, the color and light movement pretty, pretty dramatically. Uh, but it came back, I think, with uh, Fritz Pop and some of the people in Germany and some of the research. And, and there's the growth of alternative medicine. People started pulling that stuff out again. And it's, it's pretty undeniable. And, and you can, 
think about it, uh, babies that are born jaundiced or have jaundice, what do they do? They put them with a blue light in the hospital. So it's a good way to shut up your doctor if you guys poo poo in your light therapy. It's like, well, what do you do with babies that are jaundiced? Uh. And, and just two things on that note. One is I had our son at home and uh, he was slightly jaundiced on the second day. And so our midwife said, it was February, so it's cold. We were in Philadelphia. Mm -hmm. She said, just stand in the window with him. So, you know, we have blue light technology, which is great, but the sun yeah. is the original light source. We're Absolutely. all solar powered. Like that is the best thing I think I've heard. One of the best things I've heard in my life is that there's nothing on this planet that's not solar powered. So yeah. get over it and stop sitting in your house all the time thinking that you're under the proper lights. And I want to just gently talk about that briefly, which is the lights of which we surround ourselves while in buildings is a big deal. If you've been to our center in Pennsylvania, you know that we've taken great lengths to make sure that we don't have fluorescent lights on, that we have full spectrum lights, and that they're rose at night so that there's less blue lights. You know, everything's not perfect, but we've gone to great lengths to not turn on our overhead lights. Um, <laughs> in our previous space, we replaced all the light bulbs, and boy, was that a pain in the hiney. So we decided not to do that again and to change it up a little bit. But you know, we're, we're building a new construction house. And one of the biggest things I sat down with them and I was like, we got to talk about the light bulbs. And I was blown away. She was like, yeah, a lot of culture, a lot of people from different cultures have a big deal with the lights. I'm like, really, can we talk more about that? Really more people know about this than just the crazy alternative, you know, biological people, but it is so important to know what the lights are. And I have actually, hold on, I'm going to get something from Germany that I have. Okay. And there's, there's a, a resource too that uh, doc, uh, this guy named John Ott, O-T-T. Um, and he lived back in the 50s and 60s and 70s. And he actually made the uh, Disney, those early days, if you've ever seen those Disney movies where they would show a, a, a flower bloom from like a time lapse of a flower from a bud to a bloom. Okay. Well, before digital photography, they had to do that with camera, with film. So what he had to do is take either cellophane or glass and he had to cover it. So the wind, because he couldn't shift it all in position and he had to cover it uh, with, uh, and one time they hired him to do an apple. They said, we want to see an apple from the bud till the time it turns red and, and falls off the tree. And so he surrounded the tree with glass and had to frame it because that limb couldn't blow in the wind or anything. And what he found was that the, the apple kept growing and growing, and, but it never ripened. And what he figured out was the glass was actually blocking the part of the spectrum of sunlight that he needed. So he had to wait a whole nother year and he used a different type of plastic and he was able to do it. And he found all kinds of plants that some would work fine under glass and some wouldn't. And he started studying these different properties of light. And uh, so he's worth reading. He's fascinating. That is, he's, that's John Ott you were just speaking. John about. Ott, yeah. So That's very interesting. You know, that's the thing. I mean, we were just, uh, I and I saw something on a documentary the other day where they were putting special sound equipment, essentially, on mushrooms and different plants to, that allows you to hear the frequency sounds that they make that are beyond an octave that we cannot you know, experience, but that's the point of like the sound of soul device, which is the evolution of master Moto's work, which takes heart rate variability, converts it into light and sound. So you can bathe mm -hmm. yourself in your vibe, as you were saying earlier, but it's important to be aware of the lighting that we're around. Like if you're okay. sitting at a desk all day, you're in your home, whatever it is, first of all, get rid of all fluorescent lighting you possibly can, because it's just killing your circadian rhythms. Right. But there are like, this is an, and I'm a little afraid to show this device because everyone's going to be like, can I get one? <laughs> They're not so easy to get because he's off grid. He's from Germany. It's pain in my hiney, but I'm going to show it to you anyway. But this is what I walk around at Best Buys and different things when we have to buy lights. I'm like, oh, well, let me get my detection device first. Huh. And, and it senses and amplifies the sound that a light makes. So I have this LED light that's in front of me staring at me right now. And it's not that bad. It doesn't make that, you know, it's a little staticky, but what we want to hear is a nice, shh, a consistent sound, nothing too loud. I have fluorescence on. I mean, the second I turn them on, you can hear it. 
Mm. Turn those off. <laughs> That's why I don't like them on. It's not as obnoxious. I'm not saying it's ideal, but it's not as obnoxious. Mm -hmm. And then here's my fluorescence turned on. Like it's, you know, and your nervous system is feeling that. And that's what I want people to understand. Like when you go into a sauna or you have color therapy and you're getting red versus blue versus yellow versus green, what are we finding out about those different colors and those frequencies, Mike? What have you discovered? What have you determined about different colors and frequencies and what they all mean and what they do? Are they all the same? Do they all have the same effect on the body? No, no, there's, uh, there's a whole world of research in color therapy and there's different ways to do it with lights. There's the little glasses you can put on different colored glasses you can put on. Uh, and, and it's interesting if, if you find yourself wearing a particular color all the time and we'll talk about black because that's a special one but most people wear black it seems like uh, in a lot of areas now. But say you wear blue all the time or red all the time and you're drawn to that, that actually is reflecting that color away from you. So your body is saying, I don't want red, I don't want red, I don't want red. So you wear the red because your body doesn't want it. Now, when you're wearing black, black is going to absorb the energy of everybody around you. I was in England at a, a health conference of several years ago with this other company I was working with. And all the women in London wear black. I mean, you take the, the underground there, they're all wearing black. The, the ladies with the company I was working with at the time, they're wearing black. So I was kind of getting on, I was like, why does everybody wear black? I said, you look nice, but it's, they're all black. And then there was a lady, I think her name was Paula Willis, something like that, or Paula Wills, had a booth there and she was a, a color therapist. And I said, well, come by and see our thing. You know, She came over the next day and she's wearing this beautiful white dress with flowers and said, Oh, you're not wearing black like everybody. Oh, no, 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 no. You absorb everybody's energy. But if you think about it, if you've ever lived, and you live on the outskirts of Philly, I think, but if, when you live in a big city, it's a very lonely experience. And people are actually thinking, well, how would you be lonely with all those people? But you are, typically, if you live in the middle, you're new to it or something. So I think they're wearing that black because they crave, their body is craving Connection. that energy. But it's... Well, uh, Ein and I discovered a couple of years ago that we were wearing black consistently. Like we even made it our colors at the office because it went with everything. It was easy. Yeah. You, know, you spilled something on, it's no big deal. The logo pops on black, all those reasons, right? And I think I had probably worn exclusively black and maybe navy blue for like, oh, 20 years. Hmm. I mean, I, I literally opened my closet. I was like, yeah, it's black. It's black. And I never wore white because my nickname used to be grace for myself because I wanted to create grace in my life. Cause man, I like, I'd put on a brand new shirt, brush my teeth, toothpaste would be right down the front of it. Like it's unbelievable how I can do that. But when we learned it, it wasn't that we didn't know that black absorbed and white reflected, but it was like somebody brought it to our attention that as a healthcare practitioner, you're literally walking in every day and people are coming in with all their issues and then they're dumping it on you. And then we go home and we're tired and we're like, maybe because we're absorbing everybody's crap, we, maybe we should start wearing white. And it made such a shift because I used to have to every day go home and the minute I walk in the house, take a shower, just like an energetic wash. Mm -hmm. I don't need to do that anymore because I wear white 99% of the time. I mean, I wore black this week a few times and I was very conscious of it. I was like, this is weird. I feel weird having black pants on and a black coat. It just feels so like negative now. And like going to funerals, that's one of the ways that was brought to our attention. Like, why would you want to wear black at a funeral and absorb everybody's sadness, wear white and reflect it all. And, and it's like, these are some cultural things that we've just gotten away from understanding the power of the things that are in nature that we're made up of. And, and yet the simplicity and the beauty of it. And that's what I love about what you've done, Mike, is because I know not everybody can afford to get a $5,000 sauna in their home. Mm -hmm. not everybody can afford to have a $5,000 bed. And from my perspective, when you're dealing with frequency and vibrational medicine, it's about just that the frequency. Mm -hmm. You can't get light shined on your body once every two weeks for 20 minutes and think you're going to heal your lymph or your lymph or your lung or your liver. It needs consistency and frequency. Do you agree? Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. And, and so Mike created 
what's called the Solarium. So talk a little bit about this technology, if you would, and then we're going to, a lot of you probably noticed these if you've been to our clinic in the last, I don't know, October, I guess. They're all over the place. Ayn's got three or four of them in his room. Sarah's got one in her room. I have one in my room. We're looking all sorts of ways to be able to have more of these here because we know, honestly, like ever since I met Mike, this sits and blast my spleen every single day while I'm talking to clients or while I'm doing podcasts or doing anything. It's like literally treating me. And then when my clients are, I turn it on them. It's just an added value that we know is helping them, but go ahead, Mike, talk all about this little magic cube. Yeah. So the, the basic idea is it's ancient and it goes back to ancient uh, Ayurvedic times or even Every ancient culture uses gemstones. You can go to the Old Testament and the priests had the different gemstones in the, in the temple garments. They, uh, ancient India, they would actually grind up stones in powder and drink them, which is not really probably a smart thing to do, but yeah, maybe they knew better. I don't digestion. <laughs> but, uh, but also the other method they use was they would take somebody out in the noonday sun and put a gem, a different gem on a different part of the organ, or maybe several gems on different organs and let the light carry the energy through the gem into the body. And that makes a huge difference. And I, I talked to an Ayurvedic specialist years ago when I was, you know, working with a light therapy, ran into him somewhere and he said, oh yeah, you either have to drink the gems or you have to push light through them to get the full energy. So you're getting, uh, and Dr. Lloyd and I did a, a talk interview about this and he said that, yeah, you're actually, it, it explodes the energy when that light goes through those crystals, it just explodes the energy into the body. And he even gave a story the first time he tried crystal healing. He said he, it was just some guy that was charging, it was really expensive, but they gifted him a session and he went and he said they put all these crystals on him and he just started laughing after a few minutes. And he said, the guy that came in was so nice. Uh, but he said, after about 10, 20 minutes, he started really feeling good. And he said, when the guy came in to check, he goes, I have to be honest with you. I, I was just laughing when you were doing this at first, but wow, I can really tell there's something to this. And he felt bad because he was going to laugh about it. But it seems odd or it seems woo woo crystals and cuckoo, you know. But I have to interject. I, I I don't know. I've loved crystals and gems my whole life because they're pretty. Like mm -hmm. I just got our kid a rock tumbler for Christmas because it was one of my favorite things to do growing up was find rocks and tumble them and make them look pretty. Like I love them. I love making jewelry. I love rocks. I love stones. As I got older, I was becoming more of a hippie, found the Grateful Dead around, blah, blah, blah. Of course, gems and stones were pretty and I wore them, but I had no idea, honestly. I didn't feel them. I didn't know what they were doing. Fast forward a few years. Well, like 20. <laughs> And I've been doing energetic work for quite a while. And now, you know, a couple of clients were like, oh, have you read this book? You know, Judy Hall, Crystal Healing. But I'm like, oh no. And I pick it up. And the first time I opened it up, I did the exact same thing. I saw a picture of a body with all these crystals and I laughed. I go, are they freaking kidding me? Come on, crystals are going to heal the body. And, and I put it away. Now I had already been on my journey of energetic medicine healed my body, but I was a disbeliever. And I kept buying the books. Like I am a, a hoarder of books. If I hoard anything in my life, it's books a and body equipment, biohacking equipment, but books more so. And I think I bought every crystal book I've ever seen probably in the last three years. And every one of them has this, like, here's a body chart. Here's where you put the crystals. And so about two summers ago, I went to this gem stop store in Hilton Head and I was like, all right, I'm just going to do it. I'm just going to lean in. And I'm just going to do it. And I laid on my bed and I, I like just felt like which one I put them around my body and it literally felt like there was a cage of movement. And I was, I did the same thing. I lay there and I just laughed at silliness of going, this is really, this could work. Like I could just do this. And and I've done it for years. I'll put crystals on the beds with people. I've not done so much as like, oh, I'm going to heal you with the crystals, uh, mostly because of lack of time. Because let me tell you, when I'm done doing all of what I'm doing, all I want to do is have fun with people like that and prove empirical based with empirical based data that that's doing something because it is silly and simple and extremely profound all at the same time. It's it's fun. It's a train of fun. It's the quantum physics train is a lot of fun. That's all I can say. 
Yeah, and, and you know, what's happened, I think it was in the 70s that, uh, I believe it was Harry Oldfield or somebody actually built the first electronic version of this. Because, you know, obviously in England, you know, when you're going to lay in the sun, you know, every uh, <laughs> five times a year, you know. Or something, you know? <laughs> and uh, so it's, there's, you know, different versions of it. And, but what's really been profound is that we've made it where instead of having to figure it out and balance, hand balance the crystals, we pre-balance them, pre-set it up. And the uh, LED technologies has really improved over the last decade or so. And the invention of the blue LED led to the Nobel Prize because that allowed the white LED to be made because you need all the colors to create white. And the early LED devices, even the one I sold out of England, uh, it was more of a yellowish light. Uh, so the more pure, so the light that I used, which is just an off the shelf camera light that I was able to reduce the cost around $3,000 just by finding an off the shelf light that, uh, yeah, there you go. The, what's called the loom cube. It, it's uh, a beautiful light. It has very clean energy. Yeah, I was it's, just going to test it to be honest with you. I think I did this already, but I'm just going to do it again. Yeah, do it live again. actionable testing y'all. I don't, we don't prejudge or pre it's pretty good. Yeah. Consistent. Yes. And not uh, not obnoxious, and I have the volume all the way up. Okay, awesome. I had that actually tested by an expert in sacred geometry architecture, and she said it had the similar energy profile to like ancient churches in Europe. Wow. She was very impressed with how clean it is, and uh, every elect electrical device will generate some EMF. But this one, the other beauty of this is because it runs off a. Uh, rechargeable battery you're not getting the electricity because when you're running straight off ac you're creating a lot more emf and the other beauty of having the rechargeable battery is there's no wire so you can easily move it around the other system i sold had a clunky wires and stands and it was just yeah, we never found is, a good solution to it this is so beautiful and the charge lasts quite a long time i would yeah. say like seven hours or more because it's it doesn't quite last a full day if I'm working 12 hours. I do have to charge it somewhere in the middle, but it lasts quite a long time. Well, if, if you're using it at 10%, which is what I recommend, and you're using the strobing function, uh, it will last uh, over 20 hours. Oh, well, I'm not using the strobing function, so. Yeah, you want to learn how to use the strobing because the strobing actually adds another element. It actually adds an entrainment into different brainwave frequency. So try it with that. And I think you'll see it'll take it to another level. And it also, the light's only on half the time. So it, it really extends. Extends uh, it, gotcha. The amount of time. So it's, it's really a combination of light, color, gemstones, and frequency all together. Now, um, each of those in their own right have been used in multiple ways and they're, and they're terrific, but somehow the, the whole is much better than the sum of the parts. And there's some specific crystals. You don't want to just get kind of any crystal out there. You have to be... Uh, careful about the mixtures and we I have a crystal expert named Charles Matthew who you met at the conference and he's been doing crystal work for 40 years he's also an engineer yeah and one of the things he talks about is which is true is everything in communication is done through crystals your cell phone your computer is full of crystals water is crystalline and that's why we talk about structured water structured water is is crystalline, the crystal, it's liquid crystal. That's what Dr. Gerald Pollack has discovered in his research. So and crystalline being of sacred geometry, meaning it's um, symmetrically ideal. Yes, it has a symmetry that allows things to flow. It's just like when you're home, I'm a terrible bachelor who's got a, a big mess, but you ladies know when the home is clean and everything's in, life just flows. <laughs> <laughs> Right. I mean, it's it's yeah. the same way with color. I mean, how does color affect us? Well, if, if Ian wanted to paint the kitchen, the Philadelphia Eagles colors, you'd probably hit him with a baseball bat. Right. I mean, like, yeah. you know, no, I mean, and the ladies tend to have more of a palette for color, I think, because the guys are like, well, what's wrong with the Eagles? I like, the, ah! or you walk in and they're like, oh, I can't stand this color, but you'll pick one that's like a hardly a shade different. We're like, what's the difference? Oh, you can't see the difference. You know? So color affects us emotionally. It affects. So all these things play a part in um, 
at a, at a deep level and everything is communication. What do you mean by the fact that you pre, what do you do to the crystals before you put them in the cube? You do something. Well, well they're, they're, they're specially selected because there's, there's a lot of, you know, crystals have different energies, even the same crystals, you know, depends on where they're mined from, how, how they're handled. We tend to use raw crystals because they tend to have more energy. They're not as pretty as, as you know, shined up uh, tumbled crystals, which, which are great too. And those are great for, you know, holding and, and, and uh, but for pure energy, the raw form is actually better. And then there are certain mixtures we do because they complement the way the energy pulls. And so what I, what I do is when I, before I introduce another mixture, I, I work with it myself and then I'll have, you know, other people maybe check it out. And uh, so it's, but it's, it's really a uh, experiential. It's, it's the hard part of it is that it's not like a linear. It's not like a set of screwdrivers. And that's of course in bioregulatory medicine, we understand this, that the body is not a machine. The body is not, and you know, we're in this insanity right now because as a, as a people, as overall, we've demanded, you know, fix me regardless of what I eat, what I do. I want to walk in and have somebody just fix it. And what that's created is a nightmare because that can't work. That just can't work. And now we're seeing that it, that whole system is just for what it is. It's just, the, you know. And so the key to life is self-awareness and connecting to ourselves. And I think the power of this therapy is that the more you become self-aware and self-responsive, you know, the more power you're going to get from it. And uh, I've been reading and studying just recently the polyvagal theory, and I think that's very powerful. And I think that explains a lot of what's going on. But the key message of that is that we need to feel safe. It's not about even being safe, but it's the feeling of safety. And if you really look at everything like in our hospitals is designed completely counter to that. You know, it's just it, the blindness that we've seen with everything, you know, they, they, Fortunately, I've never had to be in the hospital, but I know they come in at three in the morning and, and wake you up and stick you, you know, because they want to balance the nursing load. Uh, you've got booms and, and noises and, and which are like creating this fight flight response. So it's just the worst possible atmosphere. And then you're. I walked into my mother's room who had COVID in October, I think it was this last year. And you know, first of all, I'm in like so much like garb that she can barely see my face. And it was 830 at night when I walked into her room, the television's on, the fluorescent lights are on. It's like so bright in there. The windows are open. You can see um, street lights coming in as well. And I was like, mom, let's just start with like turning the lights off and turn your TV off. And I talk, took my son of soul and was able to administer that to her. But like the lights alone, I'm like, her sympathetic nervous system is just on fire right now. The woman's never going to heal. And no wonder she hasn't slept in two days. And she had on this tiny little stupid gown that they give her that's thin as piece of paper with this tiny little blanket on top of her. And I touched her and she was freezing. I'm like, okay, so you're cold, you're under extreme lights and you're expected to heal in this position? That's nonsensical people. Like you, our dog just got operated on yesterday and we're like, oh, cushy lights and make sure she's got light therapy and make sure she's got love and she's with us and she's not separated from us. So she knows that we want her to heal. And like, that's so important. The terrain, the environment in which you put a body in, including the lights and the sounds. And like you said, the noises as well in a hospital are not setting you up for feeling safe. Absolutely. And I really think that the, that one of the key methodologies of, of this, and, and, and there's other techniques too that, that work really well with the sound therapies and all, all, it's very complimentary, but it's really helping the body to get into that calm, peaceful, safe state. And uh, it, it's just like, it's so critical. And that's why when you, when you do this, you don't want to be, you know, like, scanning through your cell phone and watching TV. I mean, you can, like if your knees, 
if you have a knee injury, you know, and you're working on that, yeah, put it on your knee while you're working, watching TV. But the best thing you can do, especially because we start on the head and we want to balance the, the, the brain and really help to regulate the, you know, the hypothalamus, the pineal, all that stuff to bring it into more regulation is you want to do that in a quiet space. If, if there's booms and bangs going on, then, then create some, a little bit of beautiful music or something that's not vocal, but just a little background music. Uh, a dark room and, and allow yourself, your body to get down into that safe, calm space. And this will take you down much faster. It'll allow you to kind of get rid of the mind chatter. And you may not feel it at first. It might take two or three sessions because we are so disconnected. Um, but I have people that will, I can almost just, you know, they can't feel it at all. And I have other people, I shine it at them, they almost fall over. They're that in tune with it. So it's like, you know. and I agree what you said, the key to life is self-awareness, right? You know, we don't only have one problem in our life and it's our level of consciousness. Yeah. Um, what, what are some of the stories? Like what has, what have you watched occur in your 15 years or so in this light energy medicine world? So many things that it's, it's almost like nothing surprises me. I mean, it literally is, I tell people, I didn't know that would happen, but I'm not surprised. So I'll, I'll give a famous story of someone famous because he's given me permission to share this is Dr. Mercola. Hmm. Now this is back in the previous company, but he owned one of those units or bought a couple of those. And uh, we did a three day training, which I led in Florida about four years ago. And uh, Dr. Lee Cowden was there, Mercola, uh, Dr. Marlene Siegel, the veterinarian. We had a really wonderful, about 15 people. And uh, and if anybody knows Dr. Mercola, he's like pretty left-brained and pretty uh, just, you know, he doesn't gild the lily. He just tells you what, what's on his mind. So he walks into the training and he says, uh, everybody introduced themselves. He went last. because I'm Joe Mercola. I'm here. I've had this a couple of months. Can't say I'm real impressed. Not sure I'm going to keep it. And I'm like, okay, great. Joe, thanks. You know, so about an hour in the training, I was like, you put it on your head. Was, supposed to put it on your head? I said, yeah, Joe, you put it on your head. I told you that. I had been putting it on my head and I said, it's, it's all right, it's my head to train. So anyway, one of his long going, ongoing things, which he's talked about openly, is that he had damaged his heart through too much cardio because he is a fanatic and he was fanatical about cardio. And he was, he's a hacker. So he was trying to hack in every way possible. And he uses heart rate variability, a heart quest system, which will show all these things. But he was just looking at the heart rate variability number. And he said, I'm, I'm just in the twenties all the time. I'm in the twenties. And he was doing everything to hack it. Well, what we did on the third day of the training, we actually do an advanced process where we use two lights. I haven't shown you this one yet, but this is really powerful. And we actually realign the whole energy system, which is called the assemblage point, or uh, there's different names for it, but it's, it's a very powerful process, but it's done in, in, um, almost like a ceremonial way with quietness and people go really deep. Well, in that, in that same training, there was another doctor there who had taught, he was in his mid sixties. And he said, I don't have any childhood memories. He told me this before. He said, my, I found my father dead on the floor when I was a teenager and I tried to revive him and he, this horrible sound came out of his mouth. And it was, I think it traumatized me. I just don't have any memories. I had a good childhood. So he comes out of this process, which is 20 minutes of this. And he goes, Oh my gosh, all these memories. And he starts just telling us, memories of sledding down the hill on his daddy's back with his brothers and kissing some girl behind a garbage can when he's seven years old. I mean, all these crazy <laughs> grandmother's carpet and, you know, he was, all they were just flooding back and people were having like major shifts. And then other people in the room were connecting energetically and like seeing things. So Mercola comes up and he's like, he comes out and he goes, something's changed. I don't know what, something's different. That's all he said. <laughs> So anyway, okay, whatever. He calls me the next day and then I'm, you know, we're done with the training and I'm somewhere else down in Florida, the clinic or something. And he's like, I just want to tell you how wonderful that training was. It was just so great. And I just really appreciate it. It was very gracious. And he goes, and I did my heart rate variability this morning. I'm in the forties. I'm so happy. Oh, that's awesome. I just got chills. That's so awesome. Yeah. And then, so what he said was, so anyway, a couple months later, he emails me out of the blue and says, I just did my five day water fast. I'm in the sixties now in my heart rate variability. This is just amazing. And I said, that's wonderful. I said, 
Dr. Cowden asked me to do a workshop presentation. Can I tell your story? He goes, yeah, but my heart meridians still stop because this device will show, this heart quest will show the meridians. I said, well, are you, are you doing the process? Well, no, no, I've been too busy. <laughs> so, but, you know, it showed that he was trying to mechanically fix it until you shift the energy. But when you go through this process, and we do this in training, everybody in the room, I think we had two people going at once because of the number of people, because it's, it takes about an hour because they process and we prepare them and then other people give their feedback. And then you'd think you'd be like, oh my God, this must be awful. But it, it's, it's so powerful and there's so much shifts that happen that it's just incredible. And, uh, but there's outcomes that you could never predict in a million years. If you had tried to figure out, you know, through talk therapy or, you know, what's going on. And he tried everything and uh, your body's smarter. It's just so your body's like, okay, thank you. I've been waiting for that. I'll take it down here. And it's so like that's the key in a lock, you know, it's, that's how I see it. It's like the body's incomplete in some energetic way, some frequency way, mm -hmm. some sacred geometry way. And then the light comes in and puts the pieces back together so that energy can flow and anything that was where there was darkness, there can be light and then it can flow out. And it sounds gorgeous. And sometimes it's ugly and gross when it happens, but most of the time it's awesome. <laughs> Well, if, if we think of the world is so, so much more complex than we can begin to understand and trying to figure out that we're going to sort through all this stuff and figure out the answer to something is, is insane, really. All the ancient philosophies, religions, they all taught that you get to the truth by eliminating what's not true to, because it's the only way you can do it. And I remember the cat in the hat. <laughs> I was a kid. He said, the way you find something is to find out where it's not. And I still remember that. That stuck with me. So there must have been a fundamental truth that registered then. And it, it's, you can't explain it. That's why you just have to do it. And see, our minds are designed. We want to know. We want to feel like we recognize the answer. We'll know it when we see it. And that's really just a way that our mind misleads us. Our mind is, is just purely a mechanism that is and, and one way to demonstrate this, I was in Las Vegas just, well, right before the conference we were at, I stopped on the way down, uh, I was on a long trip, and one of the doctors I'd met at a previous conference in Salt Lake said, can you come by my clinic? I've got a, a girl that works for me that's got real bad PTSD. And I had a measure, he was using a bio energy device, and he said, she's flipping in and out of parasympathetic, sympathetic, and he said, that's very common with PTSD. So I took uh, amethyst put it on the crown. I took uh, rose quartz over her heart. I put the, um, actually the wrong one at the time, but Dr. Kessler with the heart, it said, put, put something on the vagus nerve and use the emerald. But actually should have been the one on your spleen there, the carnelian or- Carnelian on vagal nerve. Hmm. On the vagal and you want, to, you want to stimulate it. So, but I actually used the emerald, which we later realized was the wrong one because I hadn't thought of that before, but he told me that because he's been doing a lot with that. And so- and then after, so I, after about 10 minutes, they came and got me. I was in the other room and she said, she's getting a lot of anxiety. So I, I kind of talked to her and I said, are you okay? And she goes, yeah, I just got this anxiety. And I said, well, you know, you're not your mind. Your mind's like a computer. It's got a virus. You're not your mind at all. There's nothing wrong with you. And it's like your computer. It's got a virus. We're going to get the virus out and you're going to be fine. I said, are you okay to kind of just ride through it? She goes, yeah, yeah, yeah. So a few minutes later, we're in there and she just starts oh, I feel so good. Now she's just like, <laughs> just like in bliss. And I said, really, how long has it been? I can't remember. It's been months and months since I felt, I don't even remember. So I ran for a while and then we moved one from the, the Vegas and put the carnelian on the spleen. And maybe it was 40, 45 minutes total. I don't remember. And she got up, she was just like in bliss. And he tested her and he said, yeah, she's still flipping back and forth, but it's way muted. So I went back the next day and I said, um, I saw her, she, she was in and she goes, oh, I, I went home and took a nap. And then I went to bed a regular time. I slept really well. The nap didn't mess me up at all. And I just feel great today. <laughs> and uh, so it was, it was just beautiful to watch. And they were just, uh, they, they were so impressed. They bought the whole set right then. Like, which ones do we need? Like, we, we should get them all, you know? So that, that ability to do all those things. Uh, and then one other recent story with the Solar Gym Dr. Marlene Siegel uh, texted me and she's like, 
oh, I feel like I'm getting the flu. I, I did my head and my spleen. And uh, just what else do I do? And I said, take the ruby, put it on 10 hertz and put it right on the back of your neck, right on the nape, just right up against the... And she texted back in like three minutes. She goes, I can't believe the difference. It's just been three minutes. And uh, so uh, a couple of days later, I talked to her and she goes, I put that on my neck. And after three minutes, I felt a pop. And she said, all my joint pain disappeared. My head cleared out. This is incredible. Why didn't you tell me this before? I said, no, you're not going to remember all these things. <laughs> but, it, you know, and so who knows? Uh, I've been doing that for years. And I just, when I feel a cold coming on or feel like I'm run down, I just put it on there. And that's where your brain stem. That's all these, you know. Have you written things. a book yet, Mike, about all this like random information that Mike Broadwell <laughs> has captured for the last 10 years? Just a thought. Yeah, I probably should. Uh, I've just seen so many things and I just let, I just let it happen. It's kind of like, I'm kind of a, a dummy because I don't know a lot. And uh, so I don't try to force answers. I just try to let things happen. Well, I know I appreciate that wisdom and, and the ability of theory to be proven over and over again is what becomes science, which is just a belief system. But I would say that like the Weber watch, you know, the Weber laser mm -hmm. company has also done a lot of the same things like they're using, you know, photomodulation and photodynamic, photodynamic therapy to again, give that frequency back to the body and they're seeing miraculous things happen. And we're all trying to determine is the yellow good for the lymph is the, you know, blue good for the circulation. And, you know, there's a part of me that goes, use your intuition where like the, the, when you're like, oh, maybe carnelian would have been better than emerald over the vagal nerve. And I'm like, I don't know. It worked. <laughs> I don't know who, who knows if that would have been better or whatever it worked and, and use what you have. And with light, because of its brilliance and its intelligence, you can't screw it up. You can't like, oh, I over cor Cornelian lighted my vagal nerve. Like it's just not possible, right? There, there's a few uh, counter indications that okay. I, and you know, like I've heard like, don't put Ruby on the heart or on the brain unless you know what you're doing. And people say, well, when should you do it? And like, I don't know. I just heard don't do it unless you know. Now, I don't know that that's a problem. That was just kind of tribal knowledge that I picked up. Um, and maybe if somebody has a pacemaker, even though it's like a flashlight, you know, I mean, it's, it's, it's just very minimal. Um, pregnant women is, you know, always with any energy therapy, because that energy is such magic, we don't want to interfere with it. But there are, kind, there are times when your judgment might override it. I've had practitioners that say, I had a lady in here and she was pregnant, but she was having so much problems with eczema or something that I just did this on her and it really cleared it up. Yeah. So there are times when you want to use, uh, it's just, again, your intuition, your judgment, and, um, and you become more intuitive as you use it. We do give guidelines. I mean, it's, it's a pretty simple uh, theory behind it, but it's more about really just feel it. And as a practitioner, you want to be really connected, which is interesting in, in healing and polyvagal theory, it's all about the facial response and, and the connection you have with the healer with a nurse, with whoever, that's going to put you in that feeling of safety that these people care about me. I had one lady years ago, we, we uh, were at a conference and the next day we were at this practitioner's office just messing around and this other vendor had brought her mother and this mother was like a Seinfeld character. She was like, but she was ranting about her husband. She was probably late sixties, maybe early seventies. And she was my husband. So we took her off, we put her under the lights, crystals. And she came back in after about 20, 30 minutes. I think we did her head and spleen. And she was still going on about her husband, but she had a self-awareness and she was laughing at herself. And she was, she could tell that she was being ridiculous with it. And she was laughing. And if you hadn't been paying attention to her, like, well, this lady just won't shut up about her husband. But it was, it was like remarkable. And her daughter's mouth just dropped. I've never seen her like this. And it was like, really a profound shift even though she was saying the same stuff but it's just the way she did it was night and day difference so uh my website mikebroadwell.com also has some pictures and a lot of those are from the earlier times i didn't put them on the solar gym side because i didn't take them with a solar gym it was more when i was using the other device but you can see some incredible before and after just facial pictures of people that you you could hardly believe that these were within two hour time gaps you know so uh, 
because there's a there's an upgrade, a, f a frequency upgrade essentially, and that changes what the output looks like. You know what your physical body will look like when your um, vibrational body changes. So, and so MikeBroadwell.com is one way to reach you. So Lara Gem is a it's so Lara Gem .com, right? Yeah. So Lara, yeah. it's S O L A R A Gem, which it's all here in the show notes. But just so you guys know, if you're typing it in, it's so Lara Gem mm -hmm. .com, and um. So, and when we were at BRMI, I am, um, you know, I met Charles and, or Mike, I can't remember who I met first, but that you both were like, oh, come over and give this a try. And I was like, so busy. And then finally, I forget who was speaking. I was like, okay, I'll sit back here while they're talking. So you guys put the lights on me and I instantly felt them. I was like, whoa, what are these lights? What are we doing? And Charles whispered his, you know, magic into my ears and told me certain things and made me think about certain things and say certain things. And I was like, Phew. and there was like, I didn't actually get to finish my program because I had, I was called out of the room for another reason, but regardless, I felt such difference. And I said to Ian, why don't you go try it? And Ian's like, yeah, we have tons of lights at the office. We're fine. We don't need lights. And I was like, okay, but could, could you just go sit in the chair? And he was, he wouldn't do it. And then it was the greatest because then you went up to speak and you're like, you need volunteers. And I was like, I, and, and he wasn't raising his hand, but like five people around him because we had a bunch of team members there and, and clients, they were like, pick Ian. By the time you got off from the front of the stage, Ian goes, we, we need to get a bunch of those. We, we need lots of those. I was like, I thought, I thought so too. I thought this was, but it's been really fun to have them. And I look forward, I would like to set up a training with you um, for our team so we can learn more about them. But, you know, one of the best things was, I had no idea what the price point was. And, and Ian goes, we need a couple of those, two or three of those. And when, when you guys have to understand, when you go to these bioregulatory events or you go to Baden Baden in Germany and, you know, you see something, you're like, you're bracing yourself for what the price tag is attached to these things normally. And then when my husband goes, we need a couple of these, I'm like, a couple? They're probably a few thousand dollars a piece. I don't know if we're getting a couple. And then I learned the price point. I was like, are you kidding me? That's amazing. Honestly, what you've done is, is incredible. So you guys, these are less than a thousand dollars by, by a stretch, right? They're like $600 a piece. And if you buy more than one, you can, and, and all you get is this in a beautiful box, but then you have to buy the light. What is this called? The cube or something? The light cube? Lim cube yeah. And then what that's gonna... like a hundred bucks or something. Yeah, it's under $100. What I wanted to do, because, you know, starting this up in the midst of this insanity we're in, and people are not able to get out about as much or scared to get out or whatever, it's just harder, you know, and you don't want to. So I wanted something, you know, that people could one, do at home that would be affordable, that they could have a low point of entry. So they could like, well, this sounds weird. How do I know? So they can start with one and really experience it and then move. And, and for most basic home use you might need a total of two or three for just general tune-up if you're dealing with some specific things maybe a few more but you don't need a lot at home and then you still work with your practitioner and they can do some more advanced work but if you can do that every day your head and your spleen or your head and your heart it's incredible for sleep I mean it's just mind-boggling I don't know if you tried sleeping with it yet on your head but no, but I think I'm going home tonight with it to try that. Let it run all night and sleep. What I do is I, I start with amethyst on the head. And then if I wake up at three, four, five in the morning, sometimes I'll have thoughts and things churning. I move to the rose quartz on the heart. Okay. And, or you could put emerald, uh, you know, you can, you can mix and match, but the rose, what will happen is usually sometimes it'll, I will go back to sleep and have this incredible dreams. And often I wake up in such a blissful feeling that I don't want to get out of bed. It's not, and I've just found my sleep and I'm finding that a lot of my practitioners, a lot of them that use the older system would never take it home. It's too clunky. And yeah, this one, they fit in their purse and they're like, oh my God, I slept two extra hours and I didn't even move. And this is incredible. And I had people, I had a funny story that I was down in uh, Florida in Sarasota and a, a friend of mine I'd met at a conference. Not, I don't know her that well, but, you know, really outgoing, neat lady. And so she invited me to stay at her house. And so I said, well, here, you can try this and sleep. And I told her how to use it. And so next morning I saw her in the kitchen. And I said, she's like, oh, my gosh, I can't remember sleeping like that. It was just like incredible. I, I was just and she's she's in her 60s, I'm sure. Um, 
And she was just like, this is unbelievable. I said, wow, I said, best night I ever gave a woman and I wasn't even in the same room. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Mike, keeping it light. <laughs> But it, it's, it's just beautiful. And uh, I've had people, and another side effect, there's a friend of mine that I was fortunate to meet recently, a lady named Tony Tony, who's an amazing woman. I don't know if you know Tony Tony. Oh, cool. uh, she just come out, T-O-N-I-T-O-N-E-Y, just came out with a new book uh, on the, I can't remember the name. I'm, my memory slips me, but- I got about seven book. books I need to order after this uh, <laughs> podcast today. So keep talking. So I was, uh, met her, uh, and ended up staying at her apartment she lives downtown Asheville. so she said i'm gonna put you in my like bed just sleeps gonna... around the united states yeah. you guys all That's getting true. that he's just sleeping around the united states <laughs> meets women and sleeps around just get him <laughs> well i used i used to have a, a, an english girlfriend in england and she'd say you go around the world undressing women because i would you know do their spleen yeah. so Lift well, up not the really un, undressing the spleen, but uh but anyway, Tony said, well, I usually get up at like four o'clock. I sleep in, I'll, and I'll sleep in my sunroom because I, I get up and start doing my writing at four in the morning. So you just stay in my room in this huge apartment. And so she goes, next morning I get up. She's like, oh my gosh, I slept till six o'clock this morning. And so you got to stay another night because my other friend's coming, Judith. You got to try it on Judith. You know? and, <laughs> all right, all right. So Judith comes. <laughs> Judith gets up next morning. They'd gone down for coffee. They came back up and I'm like, we got to talk right now. <laughs> this is amazing. <laughs> it's just like... So the way people sleep, and then Tony started telling us, and another friend of hers had come over, and she starts telling all this stuff. Goes, I don't know why I'm telling you all this deep stuff about my life. I said, well, I should have warned you. When you do this light, stuff comes up, and you start sharing. And I've had that happen on multiple occasions. And that's why it's so powerful, because to me, it's just loosening us up a little bit, because your body wants to it wants to regulate. It wants to, let's get rid of this thing that you've been carrying since you're three years old. It's just running around and wasting my energy. And now it's like, oh, okay. I think you're balanced enough. I can, I can give it to you because our body blocks out what we're not able to see or hear or deal with. It just blocks it out and it just runs around. And that's what stress does over time. It just, we're just all these apps running that are like killing yeah. the phone life, you know? So when you can start clearing them and a lot of them are just ridiculous, you know, they're some little upset you had when you were two years old and you can't even verbalize it, but it's still running around in there because you felt it and it's real, but if you don't even know what it's about. It might've been somebody scared you, your mother looked at you sideways or something, and it's not a, a big deal, but it's still an energy that's been running in your life for 30, 40, 50 years. And it will just... It'll start to do that. And over time, you'll just start to clear the palate. You know, I just feel like I had such a moment of clarity as you were saying all that. When I started the podcast, it was March of 2020 when we put started putting it together. I think the launch was like June or something before we our learning curve was like, okay, hit play, see if it works. Um you know, and I wanted to really educate people about how the body works. And at the time I was really like, oh, they don't understand the biological dentistry piece. They don't understand the length. They don't understand the scars. They don't understand. And through the last two years of the awakening that I'm calling it, right. That we're all going through as a society of like, like you said before, like what we've known to be true about allopathic medicine is finally coming to surface and it's falling apart. I found it funny during the five hour round table discussion that Senator John or Ron Johnson had when the 40 year doctor was appalled at the fact that never in his life in all the years of medicine has he ever known that the medical boards aren't not the medical boards. I'm sorry, that the FDA and the hospital systems are what's running medicine and that they are not allowed to practice medicine. And I was like, you're just figuring that out. Like, where have you been? <laughs> so it's great. The awakening's happening. And, and what we've known to be true is, is finally coming to surface. But my point, my clarity is that while I know that all to be true, I've let go of the medical doctors and stopped doing the injections and the IVs. And I, and I've gone back to the foundation of vibrational medicine, knowing that that's only the thing that heals. Once you remove the blockades to healing and that, Everything you said today is nothing, I hopefully it's nothing new for this community that they've learned. It's just all put in a nice pretty bow to go, your energy, 
knock it off. It's not that complicated. You're not in alignment, which is why you can't let it go. Let it go. Move on with your life. Your body wants to regenerate, wants to heal. It's an incredible system. And as you had said, the you cannot wrap your mind around this. And I think that's what people need to let go of is you're not going to understand this. I mean, I, I've been trying to understand it for 24 years, y'all. And I barely got it. He's a, an electrical engineer, his friend, Charles, electrical engineer. They're barely able to communicate how it works. I've been studying quantum physics for five years. I've read a lot of the books that he talked about, but there, and, and more, and it it's, it's not comprehensible because it's not linear. And I think that's where people need to, you know, there's a refractory to light. It goes where nothing else goes. It's absolutely incredible what light does. And it doesn't have to be that simple. It doesn't have to be that difficult rather. Get a solar gem, start playing with it. Put an am. I would recommend, I don't know what you'd recommend. I'd recommend like we did the first one was amethyst and rose heart. Like those were not no brainers. And then we started adding emerald and carnelian. And uh, I forget the other one that he has in there because I don't get to ruby, get it. Ruby, and, uh... ruby, he got a ruby. Yeah. So, you know, it, the be- this is just the beginning is what I'm saying. Like the clarity is that while physical medicine was what I wanted to educate people about to get them to understand vibrational medicine, I only want to focus for the next however many years it takes until we can switch over to education to get people to understand this vibration. And that's it. That's, I mean, when I think about the last like 30 podcasts I've done, I feel like that's all they've done is talk about exactly this. This is just the icing on the cake in all honesty, because it's that simple. It's not complicated. Well, the beauty of it is you can use it on everyone in the family for the rest of your life. You can use it on your pets. You can use it. Um, it's not going to break. I mean, the light's going to break after a while, but you go get another one. I mean, they're, they're easy and, you know, there's accessories. So I really made it to be something that people could just have and use and get so much value out of. And then I give um, trainings uh, online. I'm all my users get my phone number, uh, you know, call me, Hey, I'm, I'm doing this. What should I do? I'm, I love doing that. So, um, we do have, if you do mention the beats or mention, you know, Kelly here, um, contact me because you, you, you may have some questions, but just mention it. And we're going to give you a, a special bonus, which is a program I created called why inflammation. I'm W-H-Y. so excited about this. You guys, this is huge education that Mike's gifting for anybody that buys a solar gem. So it's a, it's like a summit essentially, but it's a program. It's an intentional summit and nobody's pitching anything. And what each person was, we well, basically ask, could you talk on this topic or give us a focus? And the depth of stuff on this is mind blowing. And when I was putting it together, it was remarkable. I was just like, man, this is really something. And I never really promoted it very well because it's so out of the box. And people are like, well, what do we send people? Like, well, It's again, like, it's, you know, I was thinking about today, if you think about, I was at a jazz concert one year, I mean, years ago, and I was thinking, you know, the best stuff in life, jazz, classical music, I'm a music lover, you know, the the crap is in these big stadiums, you know, and it's fine if you like it, but that's garbage to me compared to like the best musicians are in little jazz clubs or the symphony musicians and not many people or there, so you can get more intimate and you can enjoy it. And then the, the fat stuff, the McDonald's, you know, the <laughs> happy meal stuff is in the stadiums and, in, and that's fine if that's where you're at, but it's stuff like not everybody's gonna understand it, not everybody's ready for it. And it is because it, it just takes a little more for whatever reason, you know, why did I get an interest in it? I don't know, I was just fortunate, but that's kind of how life is. It's not going to be obvious. If it was obvious, everybody would do it. If it was obvious, we wouldn't be in this mess we're in. Oh. And, uh, you know, it took a certain fellow 50 years to figure out that masks supposedly work or don't work. And then he's, you know, right. I mean, <laughs> so anyway, I mean, we're, the idea that these people know anything is, is, is we're seeing it firsthand and, 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 uh, what they do know, and they do know some things, but, um, no, it's, it's just something you, you should experience. And, uh, but you, you need to be ready to just say, hey, I want to experience it because it's, it's, it's going to affect you. You're going to see a benefit, but you're going to be different than anybody else because you're unique. 
And, and that's what we always believe at True Wellness that you got to experience it. It's hard to, like you said, you can't predict how somebody's going to feel because they all have their own stuff inside that's moving around, that's coming out when it happens. And what we do know though is the more you do it, the better you feel. That we, we know, that is our experiment. And what we also know, and I just want everybody to close their eyes and just dream big with us for a second. Imagine instead of, just imagine, not instead of, just imagine this. You feel a little off today. So you're gonna walk into this beautiful building, the center that when you walk in, you feel fresh air hit your face. You feel sunlight and all sorts of spectrums of color of light hitting you. And you feel happiness and joy. You hear beautiful sounds. You see people smiling at you. You're given pure whole food, clear water that's alive and, and generating and regenerating for you. And then you go out and you become useful somehow. You help a child learn something. You plant a, a garden, you work with horses or animals, you read a book to an elder, something where you're giving back. That's how we heal through love. And this is the beauty of a hospital of the future with consciousness about lights and sound and all the frequencies that the body's exposed to, but knowing more than anything that it's our heart that heals. And Mike, you are a gem. And I mean that in every sense of the word, you really are a gem and what you've brought to the world and continue to bring to the world. I'm super excited to have found an alignment with you and to help, you know, in any little way that we can with our community to help spread the word of what you're doing. And I have to ask you, although I feel like you've already given it the key to life is self-aware. I think that's one of the greatest lines I've ever heard. If one of the things I like to do in the podcast is Dream big. Number two, my goal is that one day we've affected twenty three billion can you hear me kelly i didn't hear any of that it, it all oh i just started hearing you again yeah, that got completely scrambled. I don't know. Yeah, that got completely mind. scrambled. I don't know. It was very slow. And then all of a sudden, it's just like going like a mile a minute. Like it was weird. And you're kind of choppy and freezing. I don't know if, if that's like going like a mile a minute. If, if that's. I just realized my computer was plugged in, but it wasn't actually charging for some reason. Oh, OK. So okay. Maybe, that was, maybe that's that why, because I was down to 1%. So. You want to just start over with what you said? And, yeah. Uh, okay. yeah, yeah, yeah. So at the end of my podcast, I like to ask all my guests a particular question because my goal is to educate three generations worth of people that, that the ed information here has made such a tidal wave that it's so deeply in the foundation now that beyond us three generations later, this is how we live our life. And now we know we can move on and tackle the next thing. But if you had a microphone today and could talk to all 7.6 billion people in the world, what is the secret you would like them to be aware of? Whew. <laughs> that's, that's a big one. Um, you know, I think a lot of it is just that, that thing about self-awareness that uh, life is here for us to experience to the fullest and that we get there not by trying to find the answer, but we address the next thing that comes in front of us. We make things too complicated. And, and I like to tell people, if you take the visualize, close your eyes and just visualize the magic pill. And I set it on the table and it's on a black table and it's the big white magic pill. That's the magic pill. Now, invert that, do a photo negative. If you're old enough to remember what a photo negative is, what does it look like? Is it like a pothole? It's like a hole in the table. Mm -hmm. So instead of looking for the magic pill, 
look to address the next pothole that you come into as you move through life and say, here's a pothole. I drink all these soft drinks and I know it's bad for me. It's like, how can I get this out of my life? That's a pothole. How can I remove the contradictions, the barriers, the bottlenecks to me living the fullest life possible? And if you go back and say, what would my fullest life look like? I can do this. I can have wonderful relationships. I can go skiing. I can see the world. I can do whatever I love to do in all these ways. Now I start looking, where am I limited? Where can I not do what I want? And start looking, how can I address that pothole one at a time? If you can take it that way, that's the true meaning of holistic health. Just start removing contradictions. And don't try to fix it all at once. You know, like they say in baseball, you can't score, you know, 10 runs and one at bat. You know, you just got to hit the ball and let the next guy hit the ball. Right. So take that approach and you'll find that life will get simpler and you'll actually start to get success. You can't lose with that approach. Base hits, closing the gaps. Yeah. <laughs> beautiful, beautiful wisdom. And Again, if you're looking to track down Mike, there's links below, but solaragem.com is the main website for this content information. And, you know, in the last 30 or 40 episodes, I've um, shown you more instruments, tools, products, and um, therapies, like ther therapeutic products and actual uh, products than I ever have before. And the reason is, is everybody wants a biohack. Everybody wants to know what they can do at home to help themselves. And the one thing that I and I are very clear about, haha, is that light is easy and everybody should have some kind of light therapy, some kind of bioresonance thing in their home to be their own first line of defense for health. So, you know, we had a dog that had surgery yesterday. She's already had light therapy twice. Like, what are you doing? You know, like, I know somebody that was in a car accident or a motorcycle accident a few weeks ago, and she broke her arm and broke her leg and she's in this world, but she doesn't know anything about light. And I keep saying like, you need red light. You need red, red light. And she's like, yeah, I, I know my chiropractor has it. Maybe I'll go over once a week. And I'm like, once a week, you need light on your leg and arm every single day. Thank you so much for listening today to this episode of The Beats. And as your host, Kelly Kennedy, truly from my heart to yours, thank you for your time and your attention today. And if this did resonate with you, please do leave some comments. We would love to hear from you. And if this further you think would resonate with somebody that you know, please do go ahead and share that and hit that notification button so you know when The Beats is available to you. We do do some live things every once in a while and watch out for some of our upcoming events. We have a node release class coming up in the local area here in Pennsylvania. Uh, Ian has a walk coming up. So you can check out some information on our website, the True Wellness Center, about all the details about those upcoming events. Um, and as always, we pray that this information today was not only foundational, but raised some questions for you and helped you be empowered to take actionable, profound steps toward regeneration because your body is the only thing that heals. And that is our message here on The Beats. Thanks again for listening and for sharing. Have a great day.